Good evening everyone, if you don't know, you should know, my name is Ramiz Khan and I'm a filmmaker and a film critic and before I start this review, I just want to apologize for not putting up any reviews for the past week. I have been watching movies, I did get to re-watch Scarface, but there was a UFC card and the NBA playoffs is going on, people. Ball is life, I was watching a ton of basketball. So I did get to see X-Men Apocalypse last week, so let's talk about that fecal matter. I remember when Batman v Superman came out and I labeled it the Phantom Menace of superhero films. If that film was the Phantom Menace of superhero films, X-Men Apocalypse is without a doubt Revenge of the Sith of superhero films. It has an unfocused script, poor acting, lame characters, and it's a really run-of-the-mill, by-the-numbers superhero flick. First of all, let's change the name of this film from X-Men to X-Kids. The new cast is not a good addition to this film. Cyclops Young, Nightcrawler Young, they're not good actors. They're because they're kids. They're really young actors, and they're not experienced. They also lack charisma, charm, and the believability that Patrick Stewart and Magneto had. But the big shocker, the really big shocker in X-Men Apocalypse are the heavies, especially Michael Fassbender, who sleepwalks through his performance in this film. But what's even worse is what they chose to do with the character of Magneto. They went the Man of Steel Superman route, which is pathetic in my opinion. First of all, you should not be taking any inspiration from any Zack Snyder film. Second of all, raise your hand if you wanted to see Magneto live a normal life. Raise your hand if you wanted to see Magneto work at a steel factory. I, th I thought so. And as I've said before, Jennifer Lawrence, I think, is a terrible actress. She's just a cool person. She's not a good actor. She has completely flat dialogue delivery throughout the whole film. And so does Sophie Turner, who, who I like. I don't like Game of Thrones, but I like her. She has shown some acting ability in that show. And boy, is she a downgrade from Funky Jensen. The best part of this film is the character of Apocalypse. I say that very loosely, by the way. The very little stuff that he does is cool. And what do I mean by stuff? By stuff, I mean murdering people. He doesn't do enough of that. This is the main villain of your film, and they don't do enough for me to hate this guy. I mean, I was neutral towards him. I knew that he was a threat to the X-Men because he's more powerful, and I never feared for the human race because Apocalypse wants to exterminate them. He doesn't do anything in the film. All he does is give a ton of speeches, and he does the Undertaker eyes. I hope I did those right. Now, I don't know which comic it was, but it was a Thanos-related comic, and literally in the beginning of the comic, we get to see the power of Thanos. All he does is snap his fingers, and half of the world's population just disappeared, died. That's what we needed Apocalypse to do in this film, to sell him as this massive threat. But he's not a massive threat, sadly. Let's talk about this film script. Audience, you're supposed to yell, what script? The script is incredibly unfocused because there is too much going on. They cram every little thing in this film. Now let's talk about what they cram. This film suffers from too much story. They develop Magneto's storyline. They establish Jean Grey. Oh yeah, Quicksilver's in the film, so let's cut to him. Cyclops is a baby. Magneto and Xavier were friends. Our audiences are stupid, so we have to remind them that Magneto and Xavier were friends, because if we don't remind them, how would we know that Magneto and Xavier were friends, even though we've seen six movies before this? Mystique exists because of SJW. Storm idolizes Mystique. Oh yeah, William Stryker's in this movie too, so we gotta cram him into this film as well. These are supposed to be good things. They're giving character. They're adding character to the story. They're giving their story some meat and leverage, but it is just way too much for an audience member to focus on. And by the end of the film, when the film's coming to an end, you're like, oh my god, thank god it's over. I can, you know, I can recalibrate my brain now because there was so much going on in the film. They do the exact opposite with the action of this film, whereas the story takes place in so many locations and follows so many characters, the action follows a very minimal amount of characters and it takes place in one location. It's mind-boggling as to how boring the finale of this film is. And it's just... You know, it's just mind-boggling. I mean, what has Brian Singer been watching for the past two years? Bayformers and Man of Steel? How do we go from a really good final action sequence that serves the story in X-Men Days of Future Past to an action sequence, a lame action sequence that serves absolutely nothing apart from the end of the film in X-Men Apocalypse? It's 
mind boggling that's what i'm saying also minor note i hope whoever did the color correction on this film never gets hired again there's just a complete utter lack of imagination every scene with magneto is oversaturated in blue Every scene in Egypt has a palette of yellow because how else will the audience know they're in Egypt? It's not like Egypt has any identifiable factors of the country. What am I getting at, however? This film is forgettable, this film is predictable, and it is a run-of-the-mill, by-the-number superhero flick. Brian Singer, in my opinion, lost his touch a long time ago. Everything until Days of Future Past was pretty bad. Jack the Giant Slayer, anyone? And Days of Future Past, albeit being a really good film, it's also a really forgettable one as well. No one talks about it. I mean, what can I say to remedy this? Uh, just stop making X-Men films and stop shoving your young actors onto us. Good God, what did they do to Beast? Nicholas Holt, Jennifer Lawrence, Sophie Turner. They can't act, but then again, I guess now reading is considered acting. As Mr. Plinkett would say, please. Fuck the pain away. Hey, that rhymes. I think this film is worse than The Last Stand. Yes, it's that bad. The one bridge sequence trumps anything that was featured in Apocalypse. This film is an insult to the word creative, and this film is an insult to the wealth of stories the X-Men saga has. I cannot give this film a score higher than 1 out of 5. <sighs> yeah. I'm not kidding guys, it's that bad. Please do not go see this film. I do not condone bootlegging, but consider bootlegging this film. This is a $250 million film and no one put in any effort to make this an entertaining film the least bit. Thank you so much for watching people. Remember to have a good malt beverage after you walk out of X-Men Apocalypse. You deserve it after the boredom. And thank you for watching you once again. Hit that free subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Share this video on the interwebs. Until next time, I'll see you. Remember to love yourselves.